a lot of people say they grew up in the wrong time period. Oh, I wish I grew up in the roaring 20s or in the 60s and 70s, man, and roamed with the hippies. That's cool and all, but with all due respect, I believe we live in the greatest time period right fucking now. Because regardless of who you are, what you look like, who your parents were, where you grew up, none of that shit matters. We live in a time where you can literally make money doing what you love because of the internet. Now, I don't know if I can necessarily teach you that, okay? All I can do is share my story on how I made that happen. I genuinely do what I love and make a living doing it. Not because I'm anyone special, not because I have crazy talents, but because I was willing to give it a shot, willing to put myself out there and willing to make a fool of myself on the internet. Also, anyway, let's get to a more comfortable speaking situation here. Let's get a little closer to each other. And I'm going to tell you my story of how I went from working bullshit job after bullshit job after bullshit job to finally deciding to do what I love and how it's worked out for me. But let's not be selfish here. I'm not just going to tell you how it worked out for me, but for these three people as well. Minnie, Andres, and Zach. Three ordinary people, friends of mine, who like myself have found a way to make a living doing what they love. Let's start with Minnie. Now, she took the very cliche route of going going to college full-time after high school while working two to three jobs to support herself before finally graduating with degrees in sociology and journalism. But there's one thing that always stuck with Minnie throughout school. One thing she always loved doing that others deemed a distraction. Drawing, painting, designing. So despite it being completely left field from what she studied for years in college, despite much of her family not approving of it, and despite many people thinking she'd just become another starving artist, she went for it. She drew, she designed, she studied, she spent all her free time mastering her craft, she put together a collection of work, became an apprentice at a tattoo shop, made very little to no money for a long time, learned the ropes, and always put one foot forward even when circumstances made her take 10 steps back. And now fast forward a couple years, and she's killing it. Between her private studio and LA, her successful collabs, and her recently launched merch shop, she's now doing what she loves for a living. She didn't listen to the people that said it's stupid. She didn't care that it was unrelated to what she studied in college. She didn't care that people said the tattoo industry was too saturated. She just cared about being creative, finding a way to make it work, and doing whatever it takes to get the job done. We'll talk about Andres and Zach in a little bit. Back to the vlog. To be honest, I don't think most people want to actually do what they love or will do what they love for a living. Let me explain. Reason number one, I don't think most people know what they truly love. I, I would assume for the average person that they don't truly know what they love doing. So that's reason number one. The second reason that I think people won't actually want to do what they love for a living is because it makes doing what you love stressful and feel like a job. And that can sometimes ruin that that rom that romantic love that they have for their passion by turning it into a job. Maybe some things are just meant to stay a hobby. But then the argument comes in is, well, if you really loved it, you'd be willing to deal with that stress, which I think is true. Just because I love my job doesn't mean I love it every day. There are very stressful times, but overall, I love it. Second argument for that is everything's going to be stressful, right? Every job is going to have things that you hate, things that annoy you, annoying coworkers or annoying clients or whatever the fuck, right? So it's like, well, pick your poison. If I'm gonna be stressed, I'm not gonna be stressed in an Amazon delivery truck for, you know, 10 hours a day. I'll be stressed dealing with X problem over here at my desk with the overarching picture being I'm doing what I love, video editing. Okay, cool. You know what I mean? Pick your poison type shit. In high school, I met this guy. His name's Andres. He's a designer, specifically a user experience designer. Basically, he makes apps and websites look really cool and very friendly and easy to use. So he started a business or an agency where companies hire him to build and design enjoyable experiences for their customers. So he's a designer. He loves designing and doing it for a living, or at least 90% of it, according to him. But see, just four years ago, he didn't know a thing about UX design. He wasn't even in a design job role, self-employed, or was even happy with his job. He was a compensation analyst. Sounds super exciting, doesn't it? And one day, he just decided he was over it and that he was gonna go all in and bet on himself. He quit his job, sought out people who were doing what he wants to be doing and learn from them, very important, and taught himself UX design using the internet and in just three months, he was making money as a UX designer. So not only is he making a living running his UX design business, but he's double dipping in that industry by documenting the process on YouTube and making money there as well. Let me reiterate, just four years ago, he didn't know a thing about UX design and he didn't even have a YouTube channel. See, those four years were going to pass by anyway. The next two, three, four, ten years are going to pass by 
anyway. Might as well give it a shot, which is exactly what he did. He said, hey, I could just stay here at this super exciting analyst job and fuck my life over, or I can take a chance on myself, see what happens, and if it doesn't work out, I can always go back to a job. But it worked out, and great things are gonna continue to happen for Andres. All right, a little bit later, we'll talk about my friend Zach and how he found a way to do what he loves based off his immense passion for food and photography. But for now, back to my story and how I got started with this. This is my channel, you know what I mean? So how did this all start? My last job was working as an Amazon delivery driver, and I remember being parked in the middle lane of this busy street. It was a hot day in LA, man. I was by the beach. It was like 90 degrees in the fucking back of the van searching for a package and I was mad. And I just kind of like stopped and just like looked up and just was like, what the fuck am I doing? This sucks. I don't want to do this right now anymore. I don't want to come back and do this tomorrow. I don't want to do this ever again. Drove the van back to the warehouse without telling my uh, dispatcher. Dropped the van off with all the packages, gave him the keys and I said, I'm done. I'm not coming back. And on my way back to the warehouse to drop the van off and quit, I started thinking, I used to love video editing, man. I'm just gonna double down on what I love doing. I love editing videos. I'm gonna find a way somehow to stay home with my kid, not have to drive, not have to do any bullshit job and and, and make money doing it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna figure it out no matter what. I left any other option off of the table. I had a non-negotiable attitude. I confidently believed that I was gonna make it work. And if I didn't, there was no, there was no if I didn't. I was gonna make it work. I had the belief that I was going to do it. All or nothing. And at that point, I was already doing okay in terms of like my savings. And I had some money set aside to where I could survive for maybe three to four months without any income coming in. Get your finances right. If you wanna really get your finances right, because I used to be shit with money, I read a book called I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. That book changed my financial life. I'm not shitting you, it really did. So I had some money in the bank to allow me to live, to quit all other options, to quit working bullshit jobs, and double down, baby, double down. You have to double down. You have to leave all options off of the table if you wanna do what you love for your living. If you're tired of working bullshit jobs, if you're tired of losing, if you're tired of all that shit, you have to double down on yourself and on your skills, which means you have to put in the work. You have to learn the skills. In my case, as a video editor, I had to learn the fuck out of Adobe Premiere Pro, my software of choice. So when I quit, I spent all, uh, fuck, almost all my free time just watching tutorials editing videos, even if no one was watching them, trying things, just building, building my skills, building my arsenal. So whatever it is that you wanna do, you need skills. You need the technical skills, okay? It's, it's again, that's gonna help you with your confidence in this as well. So where was I? Um, where the, fuck, where was I? I forgot. Fuck, what was I talking about? One of the bullshit jobs that I used to have was working at a non-dairy, all organic, vegan, superfood ice cream shop in, of all places, Venice Beach, of course. I worked there part-time as a scooper and a cashier, but I also had the business as a client for my social media marketing services, which I was doing on the side for other businesses at the time. But it was there that I met Zach. He made the ice cream every morning. As I got to know Zach over time, it became blatantly obvious that he had a passion for food and photography. He would come up with these really bomb recipes and flavors for the ice cream, even when he wasn't asked to. And I don't remember any of his recipes ever missing Missing. Like even our boss got jealous that Zach was the one coming up with the good shit. On top of that, he'd often help me take photos or come up with ideas for social media posts for the business. And even though Zach and I would like pretend to get on each other's nerves and kind of just like crack jokes at each other all the time, we had one major thing in common. We both knew for an absolute fact that there was something better out there for us. We often discussed ideas things we wanted to do or how we would do them. So time went on and we eventually both left the shop. Shortly after that, he landed a job as a food stylist at an agency and he worked his way up to culinary producer. He met a ton of people in an industry that he enjoys and he was making connections, but yet something still didn't feel right. So he was looking for an exit, something else, something more. We all know what that feels like. Then unfortunately, but fortunately, COVID hit. So what did that give Zach? Time and freedom, time and freedom to explore, to try things, something that he hadn't done in a while. So he got together with his buddy and they created just random food projects. No clients necessarily, no motive, nothing other than pure creative expression and doing it because he wants to. A few more steps forward and at the beginning of 2020, they started a creative production company specializing in product photography for brands. Major brands too, brands you've probably bought from. They've since also started doing larger commercial video shoots and they also write and produce their own food shows as well. From the words of Zach himself, 
himself, he turned what he loved doing into a full-time job in business by proving it to himself that he could do it, not being scared to ask for help, and saying yes even when he was scared to. Now, Zach does what he loves for a living. Now, before we get back to the vlog, so I can touch on a very important point that I want all of you to listen to, I just want to say, just because many Andres, Zach, and myself started working for ourselves, that doesn't mean that you have to work for yourself to do what you love. They just kind of go hand in hand. You could work a regular nine to five, which is, there's no problem with that. A lot of people shit on nine to fives. I don't, I think they're great. As long as you're in an industry or a space that you love, that's the aspect of doing what you love. You can do that at a regular job. Doesn't mean you have to start your own business, okay? But if you want to, give it a shot. If not, that's fine. You can find jobs in spaces that you love. Back to the couch. So, quit my job. The next day, what did I do? I needed to find people to pay me for my services. So, I'm a video editor. Okay, I need clients. Who needs a video edited? I went on Craigslist and I spent every single day on Craigslist, every morning, going through every classified category on Craigslist of people looking for any sort of media services, video editor, anything video related. If someone was just looking for a cameraman, I would reply to their ad as well saying, hey, saw your ad looking for cameraman, that's not me, but I am a video editor, I'm a damn good one and I can help you make your videos better. Here's my contact information if you want, blah, blah, blah. I was reaching out, I was reaching out all the time, all the time, DMing people, DMing people, Craigslist, 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 boom, 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 every day, every single day. After maybe about three or four weeks, I actually got my first paying client. Man, it was weird, dude. Like it was this, it was this lady. It was this, it was this lady making videos on YouTube of her eating and doing these weird dancing in, in, in uh, lingerie on YouTube. And I was like, this is not the fucking site to be posting that lady. And she just did like sort of like a mukbang where she would just eat in lingerie and sort of like talk and like dance and like try and be like kind of sexy. I don't really get what what it was, but it was a black lady in lingerie eating watermelon. I'm not trying to be racist or make a racist joke because I know that's a, that's a typically a racist joke for black people, but she was genuinely just eating watermelon in all her videos in lingerie and I was editing them. And um, after a while, I was like, dude, this, this like, it just wasn't good content. Like I didn't, I was like, okay, what's next? Okay, I got the pay and did a few videos and I was like, okay, I need more clients, man, because this isn't working out. Then another big part of this is luck. I just got lucky and someone saw my, my ad at the right place at the right time. They replied to it and it happened to be a YouTube channel with 4 million subscribers. We got on the phone, made some phone calls, boom, 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 set the rate, set the work, I did a free trial edit. I was just doing everything that I could do, man, to get my foot in the space as a video editor. And uh, I'm actually still with that client till this day. They went from 4 million to now 20 million subscribers, and they started other channels that I edit for now. But I guess some of the main takeaways is if you want to truly do what you love for a living or start making money doing what you love. Number one, you actually have to be passionate about whatever it is, okay? Because it's gonna be stressful no matter what and you have to be willing to put up with that stress. And if you love it, you'll do that. Second thing, you have to have bulletproof confidence in yourself that you're gonna make it work. Like you, like you have to burn all the bridges. You just have to go for it. Now you don't have to quit your job. Like I said, you can start part-time spare time. You absolutely can. But point being, you have to believe that you can make it work. You absolutely have to. And all you need is to make a dollar doing what you love. Because if you know that you can make a dollar doing what you love, you can make $10. If you can make 10, you can make 100. If you make 100, you can make 1,000. If you make 1,000, you can make 100,000 doing what you love. You just need that first little taste of proof that you can do it. And you have to be willing to do whatever it takes to get that first little taste of proof. You know what I mean? And between myself, my girlfriend, Andres, Zach, I share all those stories to tell you that it's possible that you can do what you love for a living if you are willing to burn your bridges, not give a fuck what anyone thinks, learn the skills necessary, believe in yourself, and go after it. And it might not happen fast, and it will be very hard, but if you're really willing to make that call for your life, it's so possible, baby, you have no idea. Mm, man, I hope I communicated that well enough. I hope, I truly hope. I hope you found some value in this video. Subscribe if you like the vibe. Leave any questions or comments down below, baby. And I will see you in next week's video.